Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we take a peaceful, sleepy journey aboard Noah's Ark as we peacefully float across the flooded world with a caravan of kind creatures. Before we begin this beloved Bible retelling, however, let us take a moment to relax and find peace and comfort in the place that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into whatever comfortable surface you are lying on. Here and now, there are no responsibilities. There is no to-do list. By simply listening to the sound of my voice and embarking on this journey with me, you are already giving your body the rest and relaxation that it deserves. With your eyes closed and your body sinking deeper and deeper into the comfortable surface you are lying on, I'd like you to imagine something for me. You are lying in a meadow in the summertime. The softly swaying grass is humming with the chirp of crickets and the warm, safe buzz of bees. But that is not the only thing humming in the air. The air crackles and settles with humidity Humidity that is in every long, slow breath you take in to nourish your lungs. Summertime meadows mean rainstorms. And on the horizon, there look to be hints of one making its way toward you. The gray clouds push across the sky like sailboats making their way across a calm sea. You close your eyes, and just as you do, something remarkable begins to happen. Slowly, raindrops cascade down from the sky. But these are not ordinary raindrops. In the places where they touch your soft, exposed skin, they leave little blue dots. You watch down as the blue dots slowly cover your entire chest. As they take over like a warm blanket, you notice how much easier your breathing becomes. Your chest and lungs relax as your breathing slows. Your heart settles to a slow, natural pace in your chest. And, perhaps the most amazing of all, any discomfort in your stomach completely disappears. Your torso is awash in blue now, but you truly don't mind, especially when the magical rain cloud makes its way down to your arms and hands. The blue dots cover your arm one after the other until you are coated in a brilliant azure hue. With that hue comes another wave of relaxation your hands unfurl, your muscles relax and sink into the soft grass beside you. Any tension you feel there melts away. In fact, the same happens with your legs. It starts with your hips rotating and lying in a soft, supported position. Then, any weight or pain your knees have been carrying melts away. 
Your feet stretch out as far as they can go, then completely settle into a comfortable position. Finally, the blue dots if raindrops glide up to pepper your face. Your jaw unclenches and your tongue falls away from the roof of your mouth. Instead of squeezing your eyes shut, they are simply shut and relaxed. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find peace and comfort in the place that we are here and now, let us begin our story. This story, the story of Noah's Ark, takes us far, far back in time. At the time, the world was a place of chaos, of cruelty, of selfishness. It was a dark time when very few people lived a wholesome, godly, or purposeful life. People often quarreled with one another, stole from one another, and lived lives that left God disapproved of. When he had put people onto the earth, he wanted them to be kind. He wanted them to love and understand each other, to treat one another with respect, even in the toughest of situations. He wanted them to gaze upon the beauty of the earth with smiles on their faces, not with disappointment or disapproval. He had given them rolling meadows overfilled with wildflowers, with dense forests that stretched as far as the eye could see, with sparkling seas full of bounty and endless potential. But the people did not seem to appreciate that at all. God felt as if he had guided them incorrectly, as if he had made a mistake. So, he decided he must do something about it. Down on earth, a man named Noah lived with his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Noah was a kindly man that lived on the outskirts of the village. His home nestled between a meandering river and a meadow flourishing with wildflowers. During the day, he would tend to his flock and spend time with his family. In the afternoons, they would often walk along the peacefully bubbling stream and speak in tones as smooth and warm as honey about the beauty of the landscape and their future. Noah deeply believed in God and respected him, as did the rest of his family. They spent many hours praying to God and thanking him for the bounty which he provided them with. As God looked upon the earth, knowing in his heart that it was time to start this journey from scratch. His kind eyes fell upon Noah and his family. God could not deny that Noah was a righteous, just, kind man, the exact kind of human God had longed to create when he formed the earth. And so, as God gazed upon Noah and the beautiful life he had created with his family, he decided it was them, and them alone, that should be spared from the flood. As Noah tended to his flock one afternoon, he felt a warm sense of belonging wash over him. It left him breathless in a way he had never experienced before. 
He felt as though everything around him was connected to him, as though he was exactly where he was meant to be. The ground beneath his feet felt more stable than they ever had, and the breeze wrapping around his body filled him with a sense of pride in this beautiful place that he called home. A light shone upon him, a holy light that illuminated him and everything he saw in a blanket of gold and white. His whole body felt at ease as he sank into the grass on his knees. So relaxed, he couldn't even bring himself up to his feet. And then, in the kaleidoscope of gold and white, Noah saw a form. A form that he knew instantly, even though he had never seen it. Perhaps it was the feeling the form gave him, the glory that it radiated rather than the form itself. But regardless, he had no doubt in his mind that he was kneeling before God. He spoke to him in a soft-spoken yet powerful voice. It was the most melodic thing Noah had ever heard, like angels speaking to him. God told him that he was going to bring the world to its end and rebuild it. There was too much corruption, too much darkness, too much anger and selfishness in the world. He warned Noah that a flood was going to take over the world. The heavens would open up and rain would pour down down, down from them for forty days and forty nights. The fountains of the deep would break open, filling the world with water and washing it anew. He wanted Noah to be there for the new world, to help him rebuild it and make it a holy place full of love and acceptance. And so, he commanded Noah to heed his words as he said, I will establish my covenant with you. You will go into the ark with your wife, your sons, and their wives. Build an ark of gopher wood with rooms inside, three decks, and a door. Cover it inside and out with pitch. He told Noah to take two of each animal and bring it upon the ark so that they could multiply and repopulate the new earth with wildlife. The task seemed massive for one person to overtake, and yet Noah did not feel uneasy or unsure of himself. God's faith in him filled him with faith in himself. With his warm, comforting tone, God assured Noah he would be safe in the ark as long as he followed the instructions that he had given. Noah thanked God for his warning and for enlightening him. And then, as quickly as the flash of brilliant light came, it disappeared. Once more, Noah was simply kneeling in the field, the smell of fresh sweet grass and wildflowers washed over him in a calming wave, welcoming him back to the present moment. He blinked as he looked out over the world with a newfound appreciation. The mountains in the distance, the shape of his home, 
It all mattered so much more to him now. He looked upon the vista before him with tears in his eyes. Noah journeyed through the meadow more slowly now. With each step, he felt the cool touch of the grass more deeply. He smelled the invigorating aroma of the loam and the earth itself. The breeze brushing around him pushed him along, urging him home with its gentle and reassuring touch. When he arrived at the quaint, cozy home that he shared with his family, he told them what God had told him. He told them of the upcoming flood, of the task that God had given him, his family was surprised by the news, and yet they rallied around him. Noah began working on the ark the very next day. As God had told him to, he began crafting the three decks out of gopher wood. The smell of the wood was a calming one and working with his hands brought him much comfort. The rhythmic chop, 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 chop of his axe, and the brush, 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 brush of him casting sawdust aside became the soundtrack of his day. Overhead, the call of the birds provided a piece of background music that played throughout his journey in this arduous task. His wife and the rest of his family helped him through as he worked on the ark day after day. He split wood and bound the boat together with little rest, so little, in fact, that his family's support meant everything to him. He would eat by the fireside, full, hearty meals that his family had prepared for him. The warmth of their meals and love gave him all he needed to continue on with the task that God had given him. Even in the rain, he would make his way inside the boat. As rain cascaded overhead, pouring over the sides of the nearly finished boat, he would slick the interior floors and walls with pitch as God had intended. The piney, invigorating smell of the pitch mixed with the freshness of the rain. Day after day was spent in this manner wiping the gopher tree floorboards, chopping lumber, and sitting by the fireside with his family, until, at last, the time finally came to fill up his ark. Something told him that he would know when he came upon animals that were meant to go on the journey with him. He joined his wife and children on a trip into the woods, hoping to gather as many animals as he possibly could into his ark. From the thick, lush woods, they were able to coax out animals of all kinds. Bears, tigers, monkeys, cows, sheep, giraffes. Every animal imaginable was led by them onto the ship with no question. It was as if the animals themselves knew what was planned for them and knew that this boat would be their salvation. Noah and his family urged the animals into the appropriate places. They filed in, two by two, nestling themselves in cozy sections 
that had been made just for them. There was plentiful hay and greenery to keep everyone fed and happy, and though the trip wouldn't be easy, standing surrounded by the animals, Noah felt a strange sense of ease. He knew that things were going as they were meant to be, and nothing could stop the willpower of God. It was not long before Noah heard the rumble of thunder in the distance. He felt deep inside of him that the world was about to be changed, that the life he had created would be no more. He looked out over his home, his cozy house with his wife, the homes his sons and daughter-in-laws had created, and instead of sorrow, he felt a sense of pride and hope. They would rebuild the world into something magnificent. It would not just be their homes that were righteous, kind ones living under the words of God. It would be every home around the globe. With a loud clap of thunder, gray clouds swept across the sky. It was a mosaic of grays, of black, white, slate, and stone, all merging and dancing against one another to create what felt like as much tension as possible. No one had ever seen clouds so large, so obstructive before. The mountains in the distance faded behind the cottony puffs of gray and black, disappearing from sight. The grass and the trees seemed greener than they ever had before. They were utterly aglow, popping against the drab backdrop. The wind scattered leaves with every gust, blowing them across the grass like tumbleweeds across a prairie. Even though Noah knew the storm before him was going to be destructive, there was some magic in it, some immense beauty. It was the power of the earth and of God that he had never seen before. The color of the clouds, the speed of the wind, the wayward way the leaves danced across the billowing grass. He could hardly keep his eyes off the scene. The only thing that guided his attention away from the scene on hand was the feeling of the first drop of rain landing upon his cheek. His wife slipped her hand into his, rubbing it for reassurance and encouragement. They knew this was to happen, but not, it was actually time. The family stepped onto the ark, lifting the ramp up behind them. They found themselves safe in the main room aboard the ark, a room for cooking and sleeping and telling tales to pass the time. In the center, a fire crackled over the seemingly endless logs that they laid down in the hearth. A pot sat over the top, a pot where they would make their meals for the rest of the trip. In spite of the circumstances, everyone was relatively calm. They held one another's hands around the fire and offered a prayer for the renewal of the earth, a prayer that life on the other side would be more beautiful than they could ever imagine. 
As soon as they found their peace in that, the rain began to pick up. The soft, calming pitter-patter became a constant drone of rain pouring down over the roof. None of them had ever heard anything so powerful, and at the same time, so soothing. They gazed out the windows of the ark in awe as the rain cascaded down around them, spilling just beyond the glass panes they had created. It pooled at the base of the ark in no time, washing out the meadows and forests that they had once called home. And, once more, there was something oddly beautiful about it. The family knew that in time, the waters would recede, the lands would be fertile, the animals healthy, and the future bright. Saying goodbye to the old land was simply welcoming in the brand new land. They sat around the fire and spooned bowls of soup to one another on the first night together. It didn't take long before the waters picked up the ark and, for the very first time, they were floating. The family gathered around Noah, praising him and showering him with compliments and affection. He had followed God's word and created the ark just as he had said, and they had no doubt that the ark would serve them for the rest of the journey, no matter how long it may be. And it would be quite some time. The rain poured from the heavens and sprouted from the earth like fountains for forty days and forty nights. The sound of the rain trickling down on the ark became nothing but a drone to Noah and his family. In fact, at times, it made them sleepy and made them even more relaxed. The sound of the water on the wood, of the water sprinkling across the water, of the water on the glass panes. It brought them all comfort. It especially brought them comfort when they were huddled around the fire eating stew with one another. After all, it was one of their favorite things to do together. By the fire, they spent many days and nights telling stories while Noah's wife often told folk tales and stories about creatures in the woods. Noah told his family stories about the animals aboard the ship. The children clung to every word of Noah and his wife, savoring each story as a bit of sweetness given to them by the heavens. On more than one occasion, Noah exited the warm safety of the family room so that he could feel the rain wash down his face. It made him feel connected to the land that was now miles and miles beneath the water. And though the rain was a constantly churning storm, it didn't make for rough seas. The seas were relatively calm, moving with nothing but a slight push from the winds and the turn of the earth. There were mountains beneath them, mountains that would undoubtedly be hovering high above them as they rebuilt society. 
Noah spent much time daydreaming about what life would look like after the flood, as did his family. With all that God had done for them, they had no doubt that they would live their lives serving him. They would be kind, thoughtful, and hardworking, and encourage all of their children to do the same and to pass it on to future generations. They would not steal or harm one another or speak ill. They would be respectful at all times, even when the other party was far from it. When Noah wasn't thinking of the future and listening to the rain, he was tending to the flock below deck. The bottom two decks were overflowing with animals and supplies. Thankfully, there were plenty of each to balance each other out. Despite the circumstances aboard the boat, the animals were largely happy. Even animals such as tigers and bears seemed to light up at the sight of Noah, of the man who had saved them and brought them aboard the ark to keep out of the chaos in the world beyond. Often, the tigers would nuzzle their noses against Noah, purring as he approached them. The warmth of their fur was like a balm on Noah's soul, bringing him comfort on the rainiest of days. In the eyes of the animals, Noah could see their gratitude and excitement. They knew that they were heading for a new world and better days. A world that could be built on their own terms. Noah's family journeyed down to see the animals often. They loved to brush the soft fur of them and shower them with words of reassurance and kindness. They had never felt more connected to the world and themselves as humans before, which was a strange feeling floating upon the ship. At night, the family would gather around the crackling fire. Beneath them, they could hear the sound of the animals curling up in their beds. Making rounds in the soft hay, Noah laid down daily for them. At the end of the forty days and forty nights, the sun shone upon the deck for the very first time. Noah and his family stood out in the sunshine, feeling the warmth of it on their skin. It was their first sign that the destruction was reaching its end, and that soon the new beginning would be upon them. For the next 110 days, the floodwaters remained on the earth. Noah and his family sailed, appreciating each day more than the last. They had grown much closer throughout their journey, and no matter where they landed, they had comfort in knowing that they had each other and God on their side. Early one morning, as the family slept, they were awakened by a dull thud that rang through the ship. Noah and his wife were the first to rise from their bed to see what had caused the noise. 
they slowly made their way onto the deck, and the sight that awaited them stopped their hearts, because before them there was land. The ark rested on the top of the mountains of Ararat, and from its final place they could see the world below them in a brand new light. As the sun rose, it painted the landscape before them in breathtaking hues of gold, of blue, of pink. It was like they were seeing the world for the very first time. Every crest of a mountain, every valley, every river was the most beautiful thing they had ever seen. Noah and his family opened the doors of the ark, releasing the animals that had been in their care for 150 days. The animals all gave Noah a look over their shoulder, a glance of appreciation, a small thank you. They were embarking on brand new lives in a brand new world, just as Noah and his family were. Slowly, Noah and his family made their way down the mountains of Ararat to find a new home for themselves. They had great hope within them, more than enough to share with the people that would follow them. The feeling of the grass brushing against their feet was otherworldly. The dew drops that rolled off of the evergreen stands felt entirely different from the rain they had been dwelling in for so long. This was water of hope, of promise, of a new day. Noah built an altar for God and burnt offerings for him, thanking him for saving his family and himself. God smiled upon Noah and told Noah he had done well. He swore to him that he would never damage the earth again. There would not be another flood there would be no starting over from scratch. Noah and his family were truly ushering in a new world. Noah knelt before God and thanked him. And, just like that, God faded from sight before him. It was then that life truly began for the family. They were fruitful and multiplied, having children and grandchildren to fill the earth with love and happiness. They were kind to the land and the animals within it always working to ensure it was being properly cared for. And every day, they remembered the flood that had brought them to this place. They lived their lives fully with the utmost appreciation. Every day, they gazed around the land that God had given them in wonder. They felt deeply blessed that they were able to live such beautiful, fulfilling lives. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story and that it has brought you a night of peaceful rest and relaxation. Please, Join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.